Hi everyone, Sherlock fan number one here, and I am here today introducing a new segment slash video. But before we begin, let me explain a little bit of what this segment is about. When the long and short of it, it's me complaining about small moments in movies that bugged me. And as for this week, we have one of my personal favorites, Jurassic Park 3, the third installment and my personal favorite of the Jurassic Park franchise. So sit back, grab a snack, and let's get to the rant. The first moment that has always annoyed me in this movie is this. Remember when Nash and Cooper are testing weapons on the grounded jet plane thing and Nash draws a face on it as seen in this image here? Well, my problem with this whole situation is why are these the two best men you could find and they don't even know to practice on a moving target to begin with? Now, I don't know how they would do this moving target practice, but considering they're going to an island filled with dinosaurs that are in fact living and dangerous, you'd think they'd want to at least have some idea of how to aim at a moving target that could attack them at any moment. And here's another thing that was brought to my attention. Maybe they weren't practicing aiming, but instead the power of the weapons they were bringing. And that is a possibility. But here's the problem. We never see them using weapons like the ones they are testing earlier in the movie. Second part of my mini rant includes a scene that comes into play pretty much right as we arrive on the island. And this is a bit more of a nitpick, but I'm including it just the same. When Amanda is yelling in the megaphone and the others are trying to convince her to stop, we hear in the distance a dinosaur roar. And this is what really gets me. When the camera pans back to the group, Paul Kirby says, what was that? As if he didn't know he was on a dinosaur island. Like, what? Dude, did you not know anything about this island when you and your wife set a plane to land here? Or even to let your son go parasailing over the restricted area? What do you think that noise was? And lastly, speaking of the parasailing, later in the movie we see the remains of Ben Hildebrand. Amanda's boyfriend, fiance, something, I don't really know. And of course, she does what she does best and screams at the top of her lungs, which I guess is an appropriate reaction in most senses. But then this is the thing that really gets to me too. Then when she runs off and Paul goes to console her, he apologizes about what happened to Ben. But then Amanda says, it's not Ben, Paul, it's Eric. He's out there all by himself, etc. Wow. She sure got over his passing quick. I mean, if you're going to let your child go parasailing with someone, shouldn't it be someone, I don't know, you'd give a crap about? But a minute later, she is totally fine and walking it off like nothing. I don't know, that just always bothered me as well. Like, what? Anyway, that's all I have so far, but I hope you got some laughs or enjoyment out of this video. Or it brought some attention to some things you might not have thought of before. But either way, thanks for listening and see you guys next time. This is Sherlock Fan Number 1 signing off.